What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Post Gazette Sports Now YouTube channel and podcast network. He is Andrew Destin. I am Noah Hiles. This is what I believe they call in the business an emergency <laughs> podcast, right? Is that is that how they would label it? Uh, impromptu uh, pod because, Andrew, some very interesting news involving the Pittsburgh Pirates. We are here in the press conference room. I'll give you a little tour here. And uh, as we were sitting down here about, I don't know, what, two hours ago, talking to Pirates manager Derek Shelton, halfway through his press conference, he just casually drops this huge bombshell that O'Neill Cruz, the team's starting shortstop, is moving to center field. This is obviously big news because Cruz is a huge piece of the Pirates' future. He's also been a contro controversial figure in the field, uh, has the great throwing arm, has the athleticism to cover some range with fly balls, but also makes more than his fair share of errors, second in Major League Baseball behind Ellie, Ellie De La Cruz as we enter play Monday. Um, so just a reaction to this news, what we think will come from it. Andrew, I'll start from you. Uh, was this something you expected to hear, not necessarily today, but before the season came to a close? Yeah, I mean, I think it was something that we, you know, there were the tea leaves there, right? Whether it was based on comments that GM Ben Sherrington had said publicly right. or just based off on our own observations of the team or whether it was acquiring Isaiah kiner Falefa at the trade deadline, right? Like there were some you know, some breadcrumbs to this. Um, in terms of happening today, certainly didn't have that on my bingo card. But I think there was at some juncture you figured this was at least going to be a conversation and maybe to extrapolate it further, maybe it wasn't just O'Neill Cruz. Maybe it was a thought of somebody would have a position moved. Maybe not specifically him, but maybe it was somebody else in the outfield. Maybe it would be somebody else, whether that's you know somebody in the minor leagues who can move somebody around. Just given the current state of the team defensively, something you figured had to change. And I guess this is the course of action the Pirates figured was best suited. Um, and yeah, that's kind of where we found ourselves. So when you break this news down, there are a couple of factors to discuss. Let's start with the first one. They've tried this before. They they uh, had O'Neill Cruz play limited time in the outfield in the minor leagues. He played 10 games in left field in AAA in 2022. Um, in 2021, he played a couple of games in center field during spring training. He also played briefly uh, in the outfield, I believe, in left field in spring training in 2022. Um, it's pretty well documented. O'Neill was not a fan of the outfield. He did not enjoy it. He viewed himself as a shortstop. He wanted to get to the major league as a shortstop, and he made that happen. Um, he was informed of this news yesterday, Sunday after the win, um, and to which they both said, you know, he was disappointed. They both being Charrington and Shelton, uh, but they believe that he will embrace this move. Andrew, what says you? I mean, is this something that you think O'Neill will be willing to accept? Uh, do you expect him to, to view himself as a center fielder moving forward. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. That's how I expect this yeah. to go. There's not going to be any public statements, at least based on you know my guesses, that it's going to be anything out of the ordinary. Um, I don't expect O'Neill Cruz to come out guns a-blazing saying that I hate this move. I right? don't think so either. No. Right. So this is going to be, all, all of it's going to be a bunch of mouth PR, where it's going to be presented as, okay, this is the best move for me. This is anything to help the team win, things like that. It's also no secret, no, and you and I's experience covering this team, that O'Neill Cruz is a very prideful guy. He's yeah. a very passionate guy. Somebody who took great pride in his shortstop defense and playing that position. It's something that he long wanted to do. So, frankly, I expect this to be something that will be many months of work, um, many months of adjusting to it. And, frankly, on his end, I wouldn't be you know, surprised if this is something that carries over into spring training. It's very much still a talking point of how does he feel about it? How does he present himself when re reacting to it? So, um, when you talk about growing pains, I think that's probably an understatement in terms of describing this because it's going to be more than just the acclimation to a different position. A lot of guys would willingly be able to do that. This is somebody who it's going to take a lot of convincing. That is where I think the challenge lies. Yep. It's, it's not the – I think that O'Neill will eventually be able to accept that he's not a big league shortstop because that day comes for pretty much every big league shortstop. How many shortstops do you can you think of – that start their career at that position and play all the way through. Eventually, you get moved to second base. You move to third base. If, if you know, Derek Jeter's on your team, you get traded to the Yankees. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you move to the outfield sometimes. Uh, there, there are plenty of examples, both in the modern game and in the past, where this has been a transition that takes place. And I'm sure O'Neal had that in the back of his mind. Eventually, I will be moved to 
the outfield or first base or wherever. Um, I don't think he probably thought it was going to happen this early. And I think the frustrating part for him, Andrew, as you mentioned, it's this is a whole new challenge kind of just sprung upon him. And this is a guy who put in a lot of work to, to play shortstop. And granted, some some might argue that work was not showing on the field. And if you just look at the error stat, that opinion is validated. Uh, but we see him out there all the time, taking ground balls earlier than most of his teammates. Uh, he's, he's constantly working on it. And now you give him a new challenge where he has to start from absolute scratch. And for his bad and frustrating at times as he was defensively at shortstop, Andrew, it's probably going to be a lot worse in center field for – the near, you know, the the near future and maybe the foreseeable future, because it's it's something completely foreign to this guy, and we're not sure if he's going to embrace it. So I'll ask you this, Andrew: is this is this going to is this going to work out well for the Pirates? No, I do not think so. No, I frankly do not believe that it will. Um, I imagine this can go down one of several rabbit holes. Whether that's going to be the expressing frustration publicly, whether that's going to be the play itself, but I think a great place to start with this is that. This isn't a guy moving from shortstop to left field to right field. Right. He's going to be tasked with playing, arguably, depending on how you view baseball and you know which positions are most important. You could say this is the second or third most important position on the field. Yeah. And it's one that's completely foreign. And this is a guy who it's pretty well documented that catching pop flies has been arguably – Communicating, well, yeah, too. Yeah. Right? Like there are some aspects at play here that are very concerning. Um, and so I, I would say that, listen, I understand the thought process here. I really do. Um, I just can't worry about a various factors of, you know, offensively, he started to find a rhythm. It's less of the streakiness, the hot and the cold. It does this impact the offensive end, end of things. How is this play for an outfield defense that really has struggled on the whole this year? Um, will we see further position changes? Frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if they continue with the approach of keeping Cruz in the outfield, but maybe he gets moved to left field or something like that. And Brian Reynolds comes into the infield to play first base. I do not think this conversation is anywhere close to being done. No. We're going to be having a million of these podcasts and articles and things of that nature. But the short answer is that if it does succeed, if it does work, it will not be in the immediate. In the immediate, um, in the interim, I expect a multitude of growing pains. Yeah, I, I, I like the move simply because I think it was something that had to be done. Sure. Um, I, I think that they had to move. I, I, Cruz was not a shortstop. Um, I mean, he he had some abilities there, but. You can't just keep him – this this was something that had to happen. Now, in my opinion, I know I wrote in the mailbag last week that I would consider moving him into center field. Um, and in the offseason, you know, you give him a little bit more time to have some conversations, work into it when you're not playing games, and then spring training. Um, but at the same time, on the flip side, I think that – just throwing him out there with no expectations. It's not like this club's competing for in a pennant race anymore. Right. We'll see what happens. And it, it probably won't go well. I mean, they did this with Henry Davis last year in right field, and it didn't go well. Uh, but that's part of it. And and I think if you have those expectations where it's like, look, we just want to see effort. We want to see you work at it. We want to we want to see you take this on with a, a positive attitude. And you get – there's 32 games left. You get 16 games out in center field this year. You have all off season to work on this and you'll have a little bit of experience to build off of knowing, okay, these are instances where I did something wrong. I can grow from it. You go into spring training, you take every rep possible in Bradenton uh, and you're the opening day center fielder. I don't know if center field is his absolute position moving forward. Andrew, I agree with you. I think he's best served at a corner outfield position, but right now you look at their corner outfields, it's kind of crowded. I yep. mean, you got Reynolds in left field for at least for now. You've got De La Cruz in right field, and I still think Sawinski's a part of the, the, the future plan to platoon with him, the lefty-righty thing. So Cruz in center field, as of this moment, makes sense. Yes. You go, you try him out there. You see how it works. It's probably not going to go well instantly, but you see you see how this all unfolds. And if it works out well, if he's a better defensive player at center field than shortstop, then you win. And if not, then you, you go back to the drawing board. I do think shortstop's done, but I think that center field might be something where it might overwhelm him and they say, okay, well, let's move you to left or right field. But right now, this team needs a center fielder. They got one with O'Neill Cruz. That's what's going to happen. Um, Andrew, any final thoughts on this subject? 
Just that it's been a whirlwind. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would say just that there's I, I think one point is I think this is a question that you asked Ben Sherrington about. The one thing that I take away is the supreme positive of this is that I think it does theoretically open up some opportunities for guys. And it's not just Isaiah Kiner fully for to play shortstop. I think that, you know, a name that I will throw out there that is one that very much should not be ignored is Leo Verpiguero. He's a guy who's in triple A, twenty three years old. We forget how young he is. And the rave reviews from most people in Indianapolis has been how well he's played defensively. Um, on the offensive side, it's certainly been a struggle at times. But defensively, that's been the area that Piguero has grown the most. So transitioning that, I think it's not as cut and dry as kind of as the shortstop in 2025. I think there's various factors that play it. What if Kiner Falefa becomes your third baseman? Right. That's what I said right. uh, in another conversation I had. I think <laughs> Kiner Falefa is starting at one of your two positions on the left side. Sure. I don't know if that's at shortstop or third base. Right. I think I think what this does heading into the offseason. Did you have anything else? No, no. To that's, add? Okay. Part, that's perfect. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think what this does going into the offseason is it, it shows that the Pirates are going to be focused on positions other than pitcher, catcher, and outfield. That's what they're going to be focused on. Uh, and and you look, I mean, those are three of the most expensive positions there. They have those boxes checked. Now they can get a little creative. Um, this is going to be an interesting experiment, uh, one that I want to preface now. There's going to be some ugly moments. But like we saw, I mean, Pirates fans, I mean, Cole Tucker made a move similar to this. Uh, and I, you don't want to compare Cole Tucker to the O'Neill <laughs> sure. Cruz, but I mean this this happens. That's that's one case scenario where you, this could all go down. You could also look at Jackson Merrill. You could also look at Fernando Tatis Jr. made something like this happen. And and those are guys that you know were great athletes. And you just go allow someone to be athletic. And I think that's the goal here. We'll see how it all unfolds. Comment what you think is going to happen below. He's Andrew Destin. I'm Noah Hiles. You can check out our work at post-gazette.com. And you could keep tuning in to all of uh, your Pittsburgh sports content here on the Post Gazette Sports Now YouTube channel and podcast network. Take care. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.